this, you know, a schedule of prelims uh, exactly at this time, so he couldn't make it, and that's why I'm giving the talk, talk instead of him. And uh, all right, so here is the overview. I will focus on the statistics part of this. You know, I know that the title is like on the role of entanglement and statistics and learning, so this is going to be mostly about the statistics part, actually, exclusively about the statistics part of the thing. And the main result here is actually a separation between learning from quantum examples and learning by estimation of observables you know, from, from basically exploitation models. To be able to introduce it, I will review some basic uh, statistical learning theory. Then uh, I will talk about quantum statistical query learning. And then I'll give you a proof sketch and uh, you know, wrap up with the discussion. So let me give you a bit of a statistical learning theory refresher. So whenever you want to, I mean, statistical learning theory is a mathematical framework in which you can reason about learning problems. You know, you can prove flow bounds. Um, and uh, also design algorithms. And, you know, like to be able to do this, like you need, you need, uh, um, you know, like to define what a learning problem is and in order to be able to do that, you know, like you have to use notions like instance space. So an instance space is a set over which you learn. Uh, you also have to define a notion of a concept. So a concept is gonna be some subset of the instance space. And generally like learning problems are going to be characterized in terms of the concept class. So concept class is a set of concepts, you know, that essentially define your problem. So to be more concrete, like if you want to classify handwritten digits, you know, like your instance space may be, you know, like uh, grayscale images of, you know, handwritten digits. And a concept could be like uh, the set of all handwritten digits. Hey. All right. And then the game you play here is that you have an oracle that takes a concept from the concept class hides it from you, um, and it has a bigger button. And if you press the button, it will tell you some information about the concept. And the way it tells you the information may actually depend on the um, some unknown data distribution as well. So the data distribution is just a distribution over the instant space. And your goal as a learner is uh, going to be to interact with the oracle and formulate a hypothesis H um, that approximates the hidden concept. And in order to be able to, you know, like uh, reason about this mathematically, you still need to define a couple of things. So one of the, the first thing is what oracle, um, what do the oracle queries, or like the responses to the oracle queries actually reveal to you and what counts as a good hypothesis. So let me start with the second thing. What hypothesis is good? Well, generally it's gonna be the hypothesis that they generalize as well. What hypothesis, what hypothesis generalizes as well? Well, it's gonna be the hypothesis that um, is as close uh, as it can be to the target concept. So basically the probability that a randomly drawn sample from the target hidden distribution, you know, like uh, that basically the, your hypothesis disagrees with the target concept on a random sample drawn from the target distribution, you know, like is the error that you're trying to minimize. Now, of course, as a learner, like you'll never have direct access to this because the data distribution is hidden from you, you know, and so is the concept because you're trying to learn. it. But, uh, you know, like at least you can try to upper bound it by doing things like empirical risk minimization. And so what does it mean within this framework to learn a problem? Well, that's formulated in the notion of probable approximately correct learning. You know, for any uh, epsilon and delta between zero and one half, for every C in your concept class, and you know what the concept class is here, and for any D, uh, you, you aim to find a hypothesis H, such as the probability of the average error being greater than epsilon and upper bounded by delta. And right, I'm sure that a lot of you know this definition very well. You will call a problem efficiently learnable if you need to make polynomially many queries in one over epsilon and one over delta. This is an information theoretic notion of learnability. And if you care about computational efficiency, you may also say that you impose that you need to be polynomial in M if your instance space is you know, uh, the set of bistrings. And that's a, that's a technical theory. All right. 
So now that I told you what hypothesis counts as good, uh, let's get to the oracles. You know, so for essentially every oracle that I'll introduce here is going to define a learning model, right? And so the uh, most basic oracle that people deal with, those defined by Valiant, is the random example oracle. You press a button, and out comes a labeled example. You know, like you sample X from your data distribution and a label. And um, so this is quite nice and straightforward. You know, the learnability in this model is nicely characterized by a combinatorial parameter called the VC dimension, and this model is well understood. Right? The next oracle that I'll need to introduce our statistical queries is, random, is learning from random examples under noise. So it's the same as the above one, except that with some small probability, your labels get corrupted. So, you know, like whatever was labeled as zero, make it labeled by one, you know, and vice versa. All right. So let me run through very briefly an example from Kinesis and Vazirani's you know, book, which is the learning of conjunctions. You know, here the concept a class is a set of conjunctions over at most n variables. And uh, it goes over all literals. So every variable can appear, you know, like negated or I'm not negated. And unfortunately, it's almost illegible here. I'm, 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 I'm really sorry about this, but this concept class is nicely, efficiently pack learnable. And it's pack learnable by the following algorithm. You start with a hypothesis that contains all the possible, all the possible literals that you can have. So that the hypothesis is, has to be n literals. And if you see a positively labeled sample, you know, that, that basically means that like it's an assignment of the ruling variables that ever is to true uh, in the target concept, you will just delete all the literals that are inconsistent with what you see in the sample, right? And this way you can very quickly get to the target concept, you know, like converges really nicely. With every positive sample, you will delete a lot of literals you know, and everything is nice. The reason why I talk about this, you know, is that if you try to use the same algorithm, you know, that, that goes literally like positive sample by positive sample and delete those literals with noise, then a single sample that was labeled as negative and flipped to positive is going to destroy your algorithm completely, right? So what can you do about it? Well, you can collect samples and if you see some sample that, uh, that says, hey, look, this literal is inconsistent with what I'm seeing, you will not delete the literal from your hypothesis that you're trying to formulate, but you will just reduce your belief that the literal believe, uh, belongs to, you know, like your target hypothesis that you want to formulate. And at the end of the algorithm, you just threshold and keep everything that is above the threshold. And this way, you actually make the algorithm robust to the label noise. So in other words, you are taking statistics over the samples that you are taking. And at the you know, like end of the algorithm, you evaluate the statistics and you use that to formulate the hypothesis. And this way, you basically go from an algorithm that's very, really fragile to the label noise, to something that is robust to the label noise, just by averaging and collecting statistics. Right? And this strategy works so often that Kierns actually use this to define another oracle called the Statistical Query Learning Oracle. And that oracle, you know, is quite interesting because it takes an input. That input is some Boolean predicate, you know, that actually you, you, you takes as the input, you know, the labeled sample. And uh, the Oracle, you know, like has, has a bigger button. You feed it uh, the, 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 the Boolean predicate, you press the button, and it gives you an approximation to the probability that a given, um, that, that your predicate evaluates to true on a given labeled sample. If you are drawing, you know, samples from the hidden data distribution, okay, and you get that quantity only up to tau approximation. So tau is some parameter. If you want to have an efficient statistical query learner, every chi that you are feeding in has to be evaluatable in polynomial time in one over epsilon and n. Tau um, inverse has to be bounded by polynomial. And then, of course, like you have to satisfy the back guarantees in order for things to be learnable. 
there is a combinatorial parameter that characterizes learnability in this model called the statistical dimension. And I'll talk about it a bit more in a couple of slides. All right. So the next question you may ask, well, if that strategy worked for learning conjunctions, does it work for any problem? You know, like, can I literally just like take statistics and make every problem that, that was learnable in pack learnable in noisy pack? And the answer is no. Uh, and uh, the concept class that splits these uh, two learning models is the class of parities, you know, as defined above. To give you some intuition uh, as to why is it so, you know, when you're learning from, from random examples, you uh, collect enough samples to, to build a linear system uh, out of which you get, you know, like the, the target parity, you know, by matrix inversion or like by Gaussian elimination. And it turns out that this is extremely difficult to do with SQ. And in SQ, on the other hand, you can show that no matter what query you make to the Oracle, you, the, the response to the query will not reveal enough information about the hidden concept. And the way you can show this is that you can bound the variance over uniformly random concept, you know, the variance actually of the response uh, of the Oracle, you know. Okay. So this is the situation. Uh, you know, like the, the red circle is the set of, uh, is the set of, um, you know, like all problems that are sol solvable with random examples. Um, you know, the white circle are all the learning problems that are solvable with statistical queries, and it is separated by the concept class of parities. Right? All right. And since so this is a quantum conference, I, I have to start talking about quantum learning models as well. So we have to, actually the, the top model was defined in a paper by Jordan Jackson, but I have two references here, you know, like one, one to paper by Severi and Gorfler, the other one to paper by Serin Vassan and Devolf, you know, that made some, you know, um, important contributions to this. Uh, this is called the quantum example oracle. You, you press a button and out comes a coherent encoding the uh, distribution and the labeled samples. Right. Okay, well, you know, like you may wonder how it compares to the random example oracle, and if you do wonder about it, then please read one of those papers. But um, you can actually, similarly to what happened with the random uh, example oracle on the classical side, you can actually formulate a quantum statistical uh, query learning oracle similarly by you know, like instead of feeding in like like uh, Boolean functions, um, you can now start feeding in uh, observables. Um, so these are positive semi-definite matrices on your input. Uh, they are, you know, bounded in the operator norm. And uh, the Oracle has a bigger button. If you press the button, it gives you an approximation to the expectation value of your observable evaluated over over some, you know, uh, over the, you know, like hidden concept. I mean, like here, actually, rho is uh, this state here, just as, you know, like, like a, a density matrix. But you can see that, that this model um, is quite easy to extend to concept classes over quantum states, you know, which we also do. Uh, okay, so this way you can see this model as learning from expectation values. And uh, you know that, that also motivates us because you can say that because we have error mitigation, you know, and other techniques like this, um, it may be more experimentally accessible, right? In principle. Also notice that it doesn't have any quantum memory. Like all these observables, the all these expectation values run over a single copy of the of the target state. So this is quite important. Actually, you know, like like uh, shameless plug, Alex will be uh, talking about this. You know, Alex Niter will be given a um, um, poster presentation about the generalization of this model where you have multiple copies. So, you know, like if you're interested in this, you go and talk to him. The key question to ask now is that, as you've seen, the random examples and the statistical queries are separated by the concept class of uh, parities, you know, learning parities. Does this separate? quantum, uh, you know, examples and quantum statistical queries as well? And the answer is no. It is actually a simple algorithm that you can use to learn 
priorities in QSQ. Um, it comes with a caveat now that we are no longer in distribution independent setting. We are fixing the distribution, the data distribution of the Oracle highs to uh, uniform. But under that caveat, like, yes, that is an algorithm. And so if you, if you fix the distribution to, to uniform, you know, like, uh, and you know that, that uh, you know, like parties don't separate the two learning classes, you may wonder what problem actually separates them. This is the, this is the question that we uh, addressed in our work and, and also uh, managed to answer. All right, so separating uh, quantum, you know, random examples or quantum examples and QSQ. So here we took, uh, I mean, there's a beautiful uh, line of work on the classical side about proving lower bounds on the statistical query complexity by Feldman. And it, um, you know, like basically the, the last paper on this is, is, is this one, the general characterization of the statistical query complexity. And in those papers, like he's deriving combinatorial parameters that can be used to lower bound the statistical query complexity. And, uh, and, and so basically here, you know, like you may wonder how much of this goes through quantum way. And, uh, you know, if you can use these techniques to actually like find the task that separates the two. Um, learning models that I introduced on the previous slide. And, you know, by and large, the idea here, you know, it's a recurring theme and learning theory, but like um, we are still aiming to show that like no single query that you're going to make to these oracles is um, going to be able to differentiate large fractions of the concepts that the oracle has. So, and the way we do this is that we follow the template that Feldman laid out. You know, so he starts by looking at uh, something called many versus one decision tasks. And, um, you know, statistical queries, in our case, it's quantum formulation of that. So in quantum statistical query learning, the many versus one decision task is a task where I give you a state row that, that uh, comes either from some set S or some reference state sigma. And um, your goal is to use queries to qstat tau oracle to figure out whether I give you sigma uh, or the set s. The number of queries this is going to uh, take you is uh, is called qqc uh, s of sigma in our paper at least, um, and it's parameterized by tau. Right. And what is quite nice is that you can reduce the learning with quantum statistical queries to many versus one decision tasks. Right. So you can see, you know, here, uh, if I take the many versus one decision problem and I give you some promise on the distance of the reference state from the target set, you know, I can, uh, I can show that, um, you know, like the quantum statistical query learning at um, with, with uh, the, the, the average error epsilon, you know, and like the, uh, uh, approximation level tau is lower bounded by QQC tau, um, you know, like like uh, minus one. This, this is one query uh, difference. Okay. And what remains is to define the combinatorial, like, like an analog of the combinatorial parameter that Feldman defines for statistical query learning, which is the quantum statistical dimension. And roughly, you should understand it as the smallest expected number of observables that can distinguish the concept class C from some reference state sigma in the many versus one decision task. OK. Sorry. Yes. How do you include the reference state sigma? <laughs> yes. Uh, let's, let's go to the next slide. OK. And then we can talk about it a bit more. Yeah? So anyway, uh, there is a lower bound, you know, like 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 by by the quantum statistical dimension, and, and it lower bounds the many versus one decision task. And and so this is the template, you know, that I'm using here. You have the quantum statistical dimension. You know that there is a, um, you know, like like through that there is a um, that you know this quantity lower bounds up to up to factors uh, the many versus one decision. You know complexity, 
And the lower bounds, the complexity of quantum statistical query learning, which is the target quantity where we want the lower bound. And so what remains is that you have to figure out how to lower bound the quantum statistical dimension. And the way we do this, you know, is not dissimilar to what is happening in the proof, you know, that the parities are hard to learn with SQ. You, um, you know, basically bounded the variance, you know, like, like um, uh, you, you bound the variance of, uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> sorry, you uh, um, take a distribution, right? Like, 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 like over your concepts, you know, like your row, it corresponds to the target concept. And uh, you have to ensure that, that it, it, the average itself, you know, like you choose the distribution such that the average itself isn't in the concept class. Well, then you, then you bound the variance over that and, you know, like it is a nice lower bound that, that, that falls. And uh, the idea behind all of this is basically like no query that you are making to the quantum statistical oracle reveals again enough information about like large fraction of concepts. You know, this is the recurring theme here. And the, there was the same idea in, in the Kevin's proof, you know, like that, that showed that parties are not learnable by, by uh, statistical queries. Right. So uh, this is this somewhat like touches on your question, right? Because this is how we build the, the reference state. The reference state here is the is the uh, average. You know, like oh, it's it's basically the weighted average over the concept. Right? But uh, you can engineer it and also also the way, and it's very like problem specific. So. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, in 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 um, we can talk about it later. Let let's let's uh, finish this. But okay. All right. So so and then uh, this is how we separate uh, you know the quantum statistical query, query learning and uh, you know quantum examples. Um, the separation goes through. Uh, you know, like like uh, by uh, concept class of degree two boolean functions that actually appeared in work of uh, Srinivasan, uh, Akupaldu, uh, Brave, uh, Yoder, where they show that uh, this concept class is actually learnable from quantum examples. And in this this paper, we show that uh, while it is learnable from quantum examples, it is not learnable by quantum statistical queries. And uh, by that, we separate the two learning models. OK, and that's the, that's the result. So we do have some uh, additional results in the paper, you know, which are applications of this, of this machinery to, to other interesting problems. You know, uh, we have uh, you know, results on, say, hardness of testing purity with quantum statistical queries. You know, um, we, we looked at uh, the Abelian Hidden Subgroup problem. You know, we do have some results uh, on shadow tomography as well. We studied precision thresholds in QSQ, you know, which are a, an interesting theme on the, on the classical side uh, as well, and, um, and, uh, and so on. There was also like a small result, uh, or small result, I mean, um, uh, you know, like there was an open, open result from, from, from previous work, you know, and the, the epsilon approximated, uh, or like, like, like push epsilon for it, um, which is that there is this notion of weak and strong error mitigation that was formulated in this paper by uh, E. Wickwack and, uh, and the co authors. And uh, they were asking whether, you know, like, like, like the notion of weak error mitigation could also imply strong error mitigation. And they were able to refute it, you know, like in, uh, in the case where effectively you, you, you were using quantum statistical queries with diagonal observables only. And so here we managed to complete the proof and, you know, um, with, with arbitrary uh, queries through the quantum statistical query oracle. So this is another application. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thanks very much for your talk. Uh, we have time for one or two questions, if anyone has questions. There's one question there. Thanks for the talk, Oita. Uh, 
So the, the upper bound that you cited for learning these quadratic function states comes from Bell sampling algorithms, right? Yeah, if I remember correctly, so yes. I does, think Ar Arcupo is sitting right behind you. So, so like, if he okay. knows, then, then he Okay, if he knows, then it's fine. <laughs> so does that mean that if we look at two copy QSQs, which yeah. you said you're like explicitly excluding, but say we look at those, yes. then presumably it should again be easy? That's a good question. I I don't know. Uh, I would I would expect it to be the case. Alex, Alex might know better. <laughs> you mean in uh, stabilizer learning? Yeah, but like for stabilizers, it's also hard from two copy QSQs. Oh, really? Okay, that I don't know. It seems surprising. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, please go to Thursday, right? go and see Alex's poster. He's gonna explain to you. <laughs> Any other questions? I have time for one more question. I have a very annoying question. Like, uh, yeah, please. How do, I don't know if that makes sense, but how would you because you consider entanglement? What if you allow like super quantum correlations? How would your results? Uh, I don't think we. We, we, we studied this but but i mean i mean the thing is that like the entanglement part like i didn't really touch upon it you know here um yeah. you know like it, it, it only appeared like sort of on the tangent you know i was talking yeah, about, yeah. about the fact that like this like like just one copy of, of the state you know and, and in in this specific mode but then we have another result in the paper that specifically touches on you know, like like the difference between like separable and entangled uh, entangled measurements and uh, learning from quantum examples. Mm. So, so it's a slightly different result. Uh, super quantum correlations, like I I don't know, like we haven't studied this, and I don't even know how, like like how would I, you know, like maybe formulate something like quantum statistical query learning. You know, like 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 you have sort of formulate formulate in a black box perspective, right? That's true. Uh, that is true. I. Would be curious, like how uh, will the oracle, you know, yeah, look no, like it's, this? It's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last thing to speak again. All right, thanks so much.